Stephen Ashford is a versatile creative force serving as a writer, producer and executive producer for the captivating series Finders Keepers. And Stephen is on the line with us here. How are you today? I'm pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So can you tell us a bit about this film, Finders Keepers, and what it's all about? All right, yeah. Finders Keepers is about, uh, uh, it's a comedy about two friends. Um, Jalen uh, was in jail um, from a, co- a crime he didn't commit, and he gets out, and, uh, you know, the top priority is taking care of his daughters. And uh, his old friend, uh, Reg, reaches out to him to help him get a job. So from there, that's when all the fun starts. And it explores themes of family and relationships. So how is being a father yourself influenced your approach to storytelling and filmmaking there's some of the experiences that i use from my father from being a father um in my films um and just uh now that my kids are grown you know it gave, it gave me time to mm. uh do this film and kind of be away from them while i do it and were there any memorable experiences from the processes of making the film oh yeah most definitely um i had a great team um help out from our uh, we got uh, don griffin we got Raven Richardson. We got comedian Bud. Uh, we got uh, Dennis Tully, Michael Daniels, um, Dave Cleckley. So there was a big, uh, a great uh, crew of people that helped. And we also uh, filmed this during, like, the towards the end of COVID. So oh wow, it uh it wasn't that difficult, but you know you had to kind of be careful. I guess you say it wasn't that difficult, but nonetheless, where there are a lot of protocols to follow and more hoops to jump through than normal. Not really, because uh, we didn't have the mask mandate wasn't in, but we just you know just make sure every everybody's okay you know and if people were sick not to come on set and stuff like that so it wasn't that bad but it was like the it was a tail end of COVID for sure were there any specific parts of the film that you enjoyed filming the most like any particular scenes or parts of the film it was it was it was definitely a lot of comedy you know um from we we filmed this uh from Oakland to Richmond to Atlanta Georgia so um for me going to Atlanta Georgia and um filming some of it was pretty pretty memorable um doing that um um, just coming together and just working as a team and making yeah. this happen. You know, um, this film started out as a, um, I had this thought since like the nineties, you know, about oh, wow. this film and to, uh, finally put it together and then just to see the outcome is, is pretty remarkable. Like, yeah. Making my first film, um, getting distribution and, and, you know, uh, about to release it. So it's been, it's been a great journey. And you mentioned working as a team. What do you think is the key to successful creative collaboration in the film industry? I mean, egos for sure. Yeah. You, know, you got to have a, 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 a strong team. There shouldn't be no egos. Everybody does their part. You know, whether it's if you're the person filming, if you're the person editing, if you're the person that's writing it, if you're the person taking care of the music. I mean, everybody mm. has a job to do and they do their job, you know. So uh, teamwork is definitely important. Um, with my second film, um, 60 Days, which we just completed, um, a lot of my team came back for that one. And it, it made that one way easier than the first film for sure. Like, yeah way easier because a lot of the mistakes that were made during the first film it might have been from sound or different things like that we nipped that all in the butt to make sure that you know this one went went off good without a hitch but i'm really proud about the first film i'm really happy about it and you mentioned about the person who does the music just as an example there you're actually a musician yourself so did you have a hand in the music in some way well the two people that i had uh handle it um i've worked with both of them for over 20 years so that was um it was pretty easy just to leave that in their hands um i have a few songs that i submitted and had it in there but i kind of stepped back to do the uh executive producer uh uh, writer thing and let them handle it and that's uh uh sugar cane and uh dab daniel they did a great job the soundtrack's out right now on all streaming platforms oh wow Uh, the, the the music is really great absolutely now how did you yourself actually get into the world of filmmaking originally oh that's easy that's my uncle uh bobby martis he's a filmmaker himself he's been in films like the five heartbeats uh i'm gonna get you sucker uh rocky four so he's been doing this thing for many moons and um uh, i've been in a few of his films i had music in a few of his films and um i just you know i kind of really latched on to him and he helped me out big time um one thing that he did say when he <clears throat> watched his first film he was like it could have been better um but it's better than the first film 
film I ever did. And the, the advice he gave me going into my second film is your second film has to be at least 10 percent better than your last film. You know, so um, just and then just like picking his brain. And he really he really helped me with the second film um, a lot. So I owe, I owe a lot to him because he's the one that um, got this. He said, once you start making films, you're going to get bit by the bug. And that's what happened for sure right now. Like I'm like just rolling and, 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 and just getting it going. Absolutely. In addition to being a filmmaker, you're also a teacher and a musician, as I mentioned. So how do these different roles complement each other in your creative life? For sure. Like that's my first passion is teaching. I've been teaching for 24 years and uh, I teach PE at the same school. So um, I got to teach where my kids went to school at. So I got oh, to wow. see them grow from kindergarten and going uh, past eighth grade and everything. Um, that is definitely my passion. I love teaching. Um, one thing I did with this film, I mean, this is not a film for kids, but there are certain things that I, I will never do in films such as nudity or anything like that, just because of, you know, the kids and stuff like that. So um, it Kind of in the back of my mind, I have to think about being Mr. Steve. That's what the kids call me. So I got to think about being Mr. Steve and, you know, uh, just make a good film. As far as the music that I do, I do positive music now. So the last, I would say, 15 years, everything I've done has been positive music, no cussing, uh, uplifting music for the youth. So that's definitely a passion of mine. And how do you actually balance your time and creative energy between all these different roles that you've got? I try to take two weekends out the month, you know, to just dedicate my myself to uh filming or I take time to write you know so I make sure I give I take time to myself as well as having time for my wife my kids and my job so you just got to kind of manage your time and you know it might be a whole Saturday where I'm I'm writing or I'm filming or I'm you know doing something so I just make sure I balance my time for sure absolutely and on the subject of filmmaking do you have a specific message or takeaway that you hope audiences will gain from watching all your films generally one message is I think 90% um, 90 percent of the people that fail is they don't follow through. That's the biggest thing. You got to have follow through. I know a lot of people that have talked about doing a film and they never do it. My thing is you just got to do it. You know, I mean, life is too short. You only live once. So, you know, you uh, just give it your all. Basically, you know, give it your all. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, and, you know, put God first for sure. And, you know, you can do anything. Now, this film is of course Finders Keepers and you mentioned you've already started work on the next film so what can you tell us about that and do you have even more projects in the pipeline? For sure I got 60 Days that's another comedy um, it's complete um, we're looking to release that most likely summer um, I got that and I have a, a, a stand up comedy uh, film documentary called Behind the Laughter it follows four uh, comedians as and you see the ups and downs of being a stand up comedian I have that and then I have Finders Keepers 2, which we'll film uh, I think in March or April and then after that we got Losers Weepers which is my first horror film so the plan is to release three more films this year. Sounds exciting and in the meantime, where are we able to find this film, Finders Keepers? Uh, Finders Keepers uh, January 16th, it'll be, a la it'll be available on all streaming platforms except for uh, Netflix, so it'll be on Tubi Amazon uh, Prime Video YouTube, uh, Roku Peacock, any other place that you can uh, that you want to stream movies, it'll be there so definitely check it out. Excellent well many thanks for talking to us today it's been great to have you on the show Thank you, appreciate it and again uh, one love to everybody that had a hand in this film <laughs>